it's really lovely to see you today and welcome to our workshop on how to make hula tassels. So these are the types of creations we'll be making today in whatever colour you would like. And for this we'll need some embroidery thread, a pair of scissors, a jump ring, so that's this little silver ring. So if you have one of the craft boxes, they'll be inside your organza bag. And then something to attach your hula tassel to. So whether that be a canvas bag, or you can thread some embroidery thread through here and hang them up on your wall. So that's completely optional as to what you'd like to do with your hula tassel after you've made it. So um, if you need these materials, they're available from my studio in a craft box like this one. Uh, you'll find the details in the description box below. And these boxes contain all of the materials you'll need for all five workshops as part of our craft box thread series. Okay. So to make these, we'll first of all want to choose what colour we'll actually want this main part of our hula tassel to be. So in this instance, I chose this bright yellow, and for this one, like a tealy blue colour, so you can choose whatever colour you like. I think for mine today, I'm going to choose this bright orange. And we're just going to take this paper off of our skein. So the skein is the embroidery thread as a whole. Okay, this is called a skein. So I've taken it off the skein, and I'm going to lay it down vertical on the table and I'm going to choose what colour I want next. So ignore this pink section down here. This is the section we actually do at the end. We're going to work our way upwards from here. So we're going to choose what we want in this section here. So here I chose the dark green, then I chose a light green, then a pink and then a purple. And then we did it the opposite way around so that we've got this mirror image. So instead of this dark green here, I think I'm going to choose this red. And so I'm going to take the paper section off again and then carefully unravel some of it. And it's up to you the length that you would like. So I'll probably use about this much. So I'm stretching my arms out in front of me and I'm using this much. But if you want this section to be smaller, then you'll just want to use less. So I'm going to use this much and just slip it to the length I want and I'm going to lay it underneath my embroidery thread here and I'm going to put it about a third of the way up so just under half if we imagine that's halfway up I'm going to put it just a little bit under that halfway mark about a third I'm then going to tie a single knot just like you would start off with your shoelaces and then I'm going to tie another knot. So we're making it into a double knot. I'm not going to cut any of my embroidery thread yet. I'm going to leave this section long here and I'm going to leave this short section too. What I'm then going to do is take the bottom of this thread here and hold it near the knot. And I'm going to start wrapping this red thread around the bulk. I'm holding it near the knot just because it gives you a more secure grip. If I were to hold it down here, it kind of goes everywhere, it's quite floppy. So I'm holding it by the knot and twisting round. I'm keeping this hand still, just holding it in place, and I'm just moving the other hand around. You can overlap some sections to make it thicker. And then once I feel like I've got enough colour here, I'm then going to tie it off using this bit that you've remembered not to cut yet, because we need it to just tie a double knot. So just as we started at the beginning. After we've done that, I'm going to cut some of this embroidery thread, but I'm still going to leave some length to it. Okay, because it'll give a need to finish if we tuck this colour underneath our next colour rather than trying to chop it off near the knot. I'm now going to go on to my next colour. So you can see these have actually popped pegs around them all because it prevents them from getting tangled up. 
that's a good little tip. So I'm going to unravel some of this and do the same process, but now lay it just above the colour that I've just done and tie a double knot. That's one, two, do it nice and tight, but remember we don't cut this end yet. We just leave it hanging and then holding near to this um, coloured section here that you've already tied rather than here because it's all floppy down here. So up here and then hold it still whilst with the other hand we're going to start wrapping it around. We can wrap it around as much or as little as we would like. The more we do it, the wider this coloured section will be. And then when we've finished, I'm going to tie it off just like the last one. And we're going to repeat this process as many times as we'd like. Now with something like this, you can see I've done it symmetrically. So we've got the same colours on both sides and where I've got a little bit of pink here, I've also chosen just to do a little bit of pink here. Where I've got a longer bit of pale green, I've decided to do the same on the other side. Now that's totally up to you as to whether you would like this symmetry or whether you just like to do random colours. I'm going to do a symmetrical one for this. So I'm going to do red, green, and then I'm going to do a yellow in the middle and then green, red. So chop some of this section off here as before, but not too close to the knot. And I'm going to use this mustardy yellow. Do the same process. Laying it underneath, tying a double knot. I've wrapped it up, I'm tying the knot and then next, because I want the symmetry, I'm going to go back onto another of the same green and then onto the red. Now onto this red. Keeping it in here so it doesn't get knotted with all of the others. After you finish this section, so we've got some symmetry there, it's now time to fold it in half like this. And then just as on this blue one, we've got this pink section wrapping around both. And same on this yellow section here, I happen to choose pink again to wrap around both sides. We're going to fold it in half and then choose a colour to wrap around both sides to keep it together. This time I'm going to choose yellow and it's likely I'll need a little bit more because we're wrapping it around twice as much. So I'll have about this much I think. Lay it underneath just as before. And tie a double knot but this time around both sides. So as far up to the colour here as you can. So tie a single like this and then make sure when you tie your double the single is still nice and tight. So you might find it helpful to if someone else could just pull this single tight whilst you quickly then pull the double. And then we're going to wrap it around just as before but now around both sides. So wrapping it around, making sure that all of these bits of embroidery thread are all hanging down. You don't want any of them to get caught up here. So you're going to make sure they're all hanging down and then wrapping it around both sides now. For as much or as little as you would like, depending on how thick you'd like this colour. Once you've done this, just the same process as before, we're going to tie a double knot.
We're then going to cut fairly near to the knot, but not too near so that it comes undone. So I'm still leaving a teeny little bit left over. Okay, and then I'm going to cut these orange strands down here. And I can either choose to then keep these strands, or this is a good time now to then chop off these extra bits of colour that we've got down here. You can even tuck them under, in my case, the yellow that I've done, you can then just tuck them under that colour so that they're hiding. With this section down here, you can just pop your scissors through these loops and then cut them like this. If you miss any loops, not to worry. You can always then just flatten it out and then cut along. You want to do a little bit at a time until you've got the shape that you would like. Okay. Just stroke it out again, see if you're happy. I think you're going to cut a little bit more off here. You can kind of almost do it in a circular shape if you would like, little semicircle. And then you'll have your hula tassel. Okay. So after we've made this, it's now your choice as to what you'd like to turn it into. So you could just hang it on a piece of embroidery thread. So I could pop a piece of embroidery thread through this hole and then hang it somewhere. You could hang lots of them to make a really long line of tassels. You could attach it to your canvas bag. So if you want to do this, I'll show you how to do this now. Now to do this, you simply need to get your jump ring and then instead of it pulling left and right, we hold it like this and one bit we push forward and the other bit we push back. So it opens like this. We then pop it through some of this embroidery thread here near the top. Just needs to catch on to a little bit. And then we're going to close it back up by pulling forward and pushing back until that gap's closed. We're then going to get our canvas bag and you can keep the puller on the zip on if you would like, or you can just wiggle it off. If you pull hard enough, you can just Wiggle this section off and then pop your jump ring through the little gap. There we go. And then you can just pull it like so. So I hope you've enjoyed making these hula tassels. If you have any questions at all, do just feel free to get in touch. If you need any of the materials or equipment, they're available from my studio, Flying Fish Studio, and the information is in the description box below. It's been lovely to have you join us today, and I'll see you at our next tutorial. Bye!